What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. And today's gonna be a little bit of a story time, ladies and gentlemen. I've been doing some web surfing, and I found some pretty damn crazy stories coming from correctional officers. But before we get into these crazy and unbelievable correctional officer stories, do not forget to hit that like, subscribe, notification bell if this is the kind of content that you're into. We talk about all things prison and crime related. Now, not only do I have stories from prison, from correctional officers, but I also have a road rage story. I got a little bit of road rage the other day, and it reminded me of a crazy ass road rage story that I had with Brittany. All right, so number one on the list is a pretty damn crazy one. I was escorting a nurse down a row, which is, uh, you know, a hallway with a bunch of cells in it. The nurse carries a food slot bar, which is basically a piece of rebar used to open up the food hatch in the cell gate. As she opened up one of the food slots, the offender decided to place his piggly wiggly. <laughs> I love their choice of words on this one. There is piggly wiggly on the tray. Okay, can you imagine that being a nurse? Uh, bring around some meds, you bring your little rebar to the hatch, pop it open, and there you go. Merry Christmas, Piggly Wiggly right there on the freaking tray. The nurse immediately reared back and slammed his junk with the food slot bar, which caused blood to spew everywhere. He was hospitalized. And anybody that thinks that that would never happen in prison, think again. Alright, I've seen some sick shit in prison, and that's something that is definitely believable. Next, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to the women's prison. Jolly Rancher is the name of this one. One time during cell search, I found something made out of Jolly Ranchers and I couldn't believe my eyes. These women melted, crafted, and molded a Jolly Rancher shaft, then wrapped it in saran wrap from the kitchen crew and would pass it around with other female inmates. That is crazy, man. Them damn girls are very inventive, ain't they? Next on the list is not from a correctional officer, but a roommate of a correctional officer. Said one of my old roommates worked in a county jail. He came home one day stone-faced, so I asked him if his work was good. All he said was I saw a guy eat his own shampoo, then uncontrollably puke and crapped himself. That's how my day went. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I'm bringing this one to your attention is because I've seen this numerous times. You know, people will go to prison and try to get packages in by swallowing balloons full of drugs or whatever the case is. And the easiest way that I've seen people get the shit back up out their stomach uh, or just crap it out, whatever the case is, is by swallowing shampoo. A cap full of shampoo will make you puke everything that you have in your stomach up. I don't know why. But that was the easiest way to do it. Swallow just a little cap full of shampoo. And you know, that reminds me of a uh, disciplinary tactic that I haven't seen done in a while. I used to get it done when I was a kid. Let me know if you've went through this before or not. But uh, And if you feel as though it's a reasonable technique for discipline as well. Soap bar in the mouth. Have y'all ever had your parents... Rub your freaking teeth with a soap bar because you might have said a curse word at a young age or something along those lines Disrespect them or something. They freaking made you chew on a piece of soap for a little bit <laughs> Well, not really chew on it. They just rub it All you gotta do is rub it on your teeth and that's all it takes The taste is in there forever It seems like and I know this has nothing to do with prison But please let me know in the comment section if anyone else has had this disciplinary action done to them Hopefully there is someone out there. I don't feel crazy and abused <laughs> but Yeah, a little cap of shampoo would definitely make people puke. I've seen people do it numerous times works like a charm Next on the list, segregation mutilation. Once I seen an inmate in segregation get very upset and he didn't get some paper, a CO promised to him. Since he didn't get his paperwork, the inmate took off one of his toenails and started slicing his own arm up with it. Blood everywhere. Can you imagine that, ladies and gentlemen? Segregation. You don't know how this guy's cutting himself up. you taking everything out of the cell that, that he could use to cause self-harm, but somehow... He's still cutting himself up. How is this happening? You would never think in a million years that this guy's cutting himself up with his own toenail. That shit's crazy, man. Unbelievable. But it's believable. Unbelievable. But it's believable. Next, ladies and gentlemen, is a wonderful Easter surprise story. 
Yes. It's Easter morning and one of the inmates thought it would be a brilliant idea to get completely naked and shove a toilet scrubber up his butt so only part visible would be the bristled bunny tail. <laughs> <laughs> he then proceeded to scream that he was the Easter Bunny while trying to hop around and avoid oncoming guards. Now that's unbelievably believable because I've been in jail where guys would strip down butt naked and beat each other with shower shoes. I've seen some crazy weird shit in jail, man. You won't see no shit like that in prison at all, for sure. At least any of the prisons I've seen, I ain't seen no crazy stuff like that. But definitely in jail, I've seen the weirdest things, man. And uh, that shit does not surprise me. This just goes to show you how different jail is in some states. <laughs> All right, because this shit's crazy. I know in a lot of states, probably like definitely in California, you would never see shit like this. But I mean, we used to have people eat Chico sticks after someone done ran laps around the jail block, a little tiny jail block, probably 30 laps with the Chico stick in between his butt cheeks. People would eat them. People would drink bullet water, which is the community toilet water. They would drink the whole glass of water. I've seen people smear stuff, uh, food or honey bun on the uh, shower drain with a shower shoe. And then someone would lick the whole bottom of the shower shoe for like, what, $10 in honey buns? I've seen some of the nastiest and filthiest pranks you could possibly imagine. So that story is absolutely unbelievably believable. All right, I've seen the craziest things go on in jail. So a little uh, snow bunny tail, bristled tail is not hard to believe. I do have a lot more prison stories to tell y'all from correctional officers. I have a list here. We'll save that for another episode, but I do want to end this with a road rage story I think y'all will uh, find interesting. Like I said, I had a situation like this happen to me recently, but uh, in this situation, I didn't have a gun. Back in the day, I had a gun. We're going to be talking about back in the day. All right, I was riding with Brittany back in the day and I still carried a weapon. Uh, I had a lot of enemies out in the streets, still do to this day, but I don't carry a weapon no more. I don't leave the house very often. <laughs> I'll never forget, there was this car I was coming back from, I think New York or some shit. I don't know what state it was, it was some state up north and I was coming back and you know, when you're on the road uh, late at night, some guys would like to ride your ass so that you know, if you get pulled over, it's like a bait car. I forget what they call them, but they'll ride right behind you uh, really close, ride your ass to make you speed up so that if you speed up, the person that gets caught speeding is going to be you and not him. But he's forcing you to speed up because he's right on your ass, right? Uh, and there's a whole nother lane, but you won't get over. So what did I do? Back in the day, I tapped my brakes. And I went slower than usual. And this guy would just tap his brakes with me and stay right behind me. But he wouldn't pass. So finally, I would slam my brakes on. Or I would switch lanes really quick and I would slam my brakes on. I would get behind him. Right? I would get behind him and I would turn on my high beams. And then I would chase him for a little bit and I wouldn't move lanes. And then he would do it and he would get behind me. And we were just battling back and forth on who's going to get behind the person and high beam him the longest. That's what it turned into, a high beam contest. So finally, I get behind him. And I'm like, I'm not letting this guy get behind me again. So I keep my distance. I'm making sure he can't slam on his brakes. And if he does, I'll slam mine on. And he ain't getting behind me again, right? So finally, uh, after he attempted a few times, he stops dead stop in the middle of the road. Dead stop. I mean, this is on the interstate coming back from up north. I think we're in Maryland, so there's no lights on. I mean, it's pitch black, all right? And he's at a dead stop. I'm at a dead stop. I got his car high beamed. He ain't getting out. He's just looking in the mirror and some creepy shit, right? So uh, I'm sitting there waiting to see what he's going to do. We're sitting in the middle of a fucking interstate, dead stop, in the middle of the morning, 3 in the morning, and no one's doing nothing. All we have on is our lights. It's like... Mono e mono from car to car, <laughs> you know. So finally, after about ten or fifteen minutes of just dead stop in the middle of the interstate, he drives off. He drives off, and I'm still behind him, high beaming the shit out of him. At this point, I don't give a damn. I'll I'll follow him to the ends of this damn earth. And just keep this in mind, ladies and gentlemen, we were doing this battling shit 
on the interstate for at least an hour. At least an hour. Brittany couldn't believe she actually took a nap and woke back up and said, you're still beefing with this guy on the interstate? I'm like, yeah, this shit's getting real, you know? So anyway, she's telling me not to do this, not to do that, but I'm stubborn, man. I'm still young. You ain't gonna tell me nothing, you know? So he pulls off and he goes to a gas station, I believe. So I'm thinking it's over because he pulls into a gas station, but he didn't pull into it. He pulled into it and then pulled right out to get back behind me. Sneaky ass dude. He snuck attacked me. So I said, I had enough of this shit, right? I said, Brittany, this guy just pulled in behind me again. He, he faked going to, he fake pumped me going to the gas pump. So he's behind me, high beaming the shit out of me. We're the only ones on the interstate. Finally, I see another gas station. I pull in. I'm like, please. Please pull in, fool. I got something for you. Pull in! And sure enough, he pulls in behind me. I circle around the gas pump. You know, you can go in the aisle of the pump, gas pump. And if you want to just do a U-turn really quick and go out the the entrance again, you can. So I went, went around the pump, circled around. He's circling around really slow. So when I circled around to go out the parking lot, me and him are locking eyes. He's still following me. He's about to loop around behind me, but... Right that, at that moment, we lock eyes, right? And I pull out the burner. He floors the gas right into a gas pump. <laughs> he floored that shit. He was so damn scared. He floored that shit directly into a gas pump, ladies and gentlemen. Me and Brittany took off. 